Vampire hunting is a business. Cut next and cash your checks. Hello friends, my name is Stevie Cade and welcome to Film Trigger. A random trailer dropped just a few weeks ago called Day Shift and I had no clue what this trailer was about and I was completely shocked when I learned it was a vampire movie. I was very intrigued it was a vampire movie and I've been very excited to watch it and it finally dropped on Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. But before we dive into all that, if you could hit that like thumbs up button, that subscribe button and the little bell ding thing so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Without further ado, let's dive into my review for Day Shift. Welcome to the day shift, motherfucker. As I said, I was really excited to see this movie and, uh, and well, let's just dive into what I like first. Because there are some redeeming qualities, some really good redeeming qualities, which makes this movie even more frustrating to me. And one of those redeeming qualities is the vampires themselves. It's like vampires meets the exorcist. That's a pretty good combination. These vampires are fucking awesome. They play heavy into the horror aspect. They're hard to kill because they're all bendy and contort in weird ways. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a new take on the vampire genre. And I love vampire genres. I love new takes on vampires. As long as we stay away from the leather wearing ninja fighting vampires of the early 2000s, I'm good. And coupled with that are the kills. The kills are very creative in this movie and all around is very well choreographed. You can tell a lot of heart and passion went into creating these kills and the fight scenes and the weaponry. And it just adds to the overall fun with this new take of the vampires that we get. Let's get cracking. Oh, no. No. Then you add the layer of the cinematography, which I also really enjoy about this movie. This film is a horror movie with comedy and the cinematography really plays into that. It's got the nice bright colors. It's shot very well. The movie overall just looks really good. It does play heavy into the CGI, but it's not bad. It's really good CGI as well. Definitely has some high production value to it. And I appreciate this movie for that. Another thing I really like about this movie is actually uh, uh, Dave Franco. Dave Franco is literally the most interesting person and character in this movie. I don't know if that's because he's surrounded by subpar acting, which we'll dive into a little later in this review, or if he's just genuinely good. I don't remember seeing Dave Franco in any other movies, but what I do remember is that his brother, the other Franco, I, I'm not a fan of. If you've watched my Spider-Man reviews, then you know I am not a James Franco fan. It's good to see a high quality Franco on screen. I liked his character, Seth. He was funny, great comedic timing, and just all around great comedic relief. Vampires just tried to kill me. And now I just pissed my favorite fucking Hey, 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 hey everybody pisses himself the first time. Uh, really? Yeah. Did yeah. you? No I, no, no, I didn't, but, but listen, you did. It's everything I ever wanted from a Franco. It really is. Unfortunately, he's the only character that I like in this movie. I, yeah, it sucks because everything else is almost there when it comes to the characters and the acting in this film. But this is what's going to bring me into what I'm on the fence about when it comes to this movie. And that is the subpar acting. It's not terrible acting. It's not the worst acting. It's just meh acting. And the prime example I'm going to give for this is Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx has always been hit or miss with me. I think he might be a little overrated. I know he's done some really good movies, but overall, I'm just not impressed with his acting in most movies that I see him in. There are some parts where his comedy hits and he, and he draws a chuckle out of me, but it's just that same old, same old Jamie Foxx just reading lines and making angry faces when he's told to make angry faces. That's what comes across to me. And Snoop Dogg is in this movie and well, we don't really know Snoop Dogg for his acting, now do we? No, but he's in there. He's Snoop dogging it up. Lock and load. The concept of this movie is absolutely wonderful. Look at it like men in black, but vampires. And it had a lot of potential with this concept. It really did. But the execution was bad. Now, moving right along with what I don't like about this film. The storytelling is very unbalanced, it's full of plot conveniences, suspension of disbelief, it's predictable, and it doesn't follow its own rules. It's all around just kind of lazy, and ah oh man, it sucks because if it wasn't lazy, it would have been a much more enjoyable film. Like I said, the fights and the kills are freaking amazing, but they're not enough to carry this movie because the film is just way too long for what it delivers. 
So you have great action, great kill sequences, the movie looks good, but way too many empty calories and storytelling for it to be impactful. As a matter of fact, if you would have shaven off like 30 minutes off this movie but not changed anything else, that honestly would have made this movie a little higher on the grading than I got it. It's just exposition, the movie. How is this movie that long but still needs all this exposition to explain what's going on? This is my problem I'm having with the storytelling part. How is this movie this long and still have almost no character development? Dave Franco's character, Seth, is probably the most developed character in the film, and that's why I like him a lot, because I know him. Even the main character, Jamie Foxx, has slight character development, but not really too much, and every other character in this movie is shallow. You don't really know much about them. They just show up, here's their character, they deliver you all the exposition that you need, and they do that quite a few times before you move forward, and that's it. Then they're out. I really wish they would have spent more time with the storytelling and the developing of these characters. And it doesn't make sense that they didn't since this, since this movie is almost two hours long. Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know how that happens. I don't know how you have a two hour long film that has very thought out, very well planned sequences. But like the in between is just, as I said, just empty calories of story. It's just, I don't, why? Why would a movie with such good production value lack on that? That, that just blows my mind. And as I said before, this movie doesn't play by the own rules that it sets up in its universe. I can believe any movie. Hell, again, Spider-Man No Way Home. Look how crazy the suspension of disbelief is in that film, but we believe it because the movie sets up its own world. It tells you what the rules are in this world, and it follows those rules. This movie does not. It sets up the rules in this world, and then this seems to break them for plot convenience, which sucks. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, instead of this character figuring out a way to handle this or do that, we're just going to drop in this plot convenience that makes no sense to the world that we set up and we're not going to even explain it it's just there because we just need an easy way to move the story forward again very slowly as soon as jamie fox's character bud met his daughter yeah i just that was it i predicted the rest of the movie and i was about 80 percent correct if i don't come up with 10k my wife and my daughter are going to move to florida Hi, Dad. you're late again which is kind of crazy for a two hour movie that I really don't know much about. And the fact that I just told you that I could predict the rest of the movie by being introduced to that character's daughter, you might be able to figure out where that storyline probably goes to. I'm huge on suspension of disbelief. I don't mind living in a world that seems outlandish, but then you have these complete oversights that happen in this film that really just draw me out of the movie. These are vampire hunters. This is what they do for money, except none of them wear any body armor. Nope. Well, they have all the guns and all the cool tricks and toys in the world, but nothing to protect themselves. Well, that's not true. That's, that's, that's not true. There's actually one guy um, who does wear a bulletproof vest with no shirt on. They're hunting vampires, man. Like, skin, cover it. I mean, even Jamie Foxx's character has scars all over his body, and I'm like, well, yeah, no shit, dude. It's like, you're not wearing any sort of protection. You are literally going into a war zone and you don't protect yourself. These are things I can't really excuse. This is one of the many glossed over things in this film that takes me out of it. It sucks because this movie could have been so good. Lazy is the key word when it comes to this review. And another prime example of this is something that I can't really explain in detail because it is a spoiler. There's this last shot of the movie right before the credits roll where they, they show something and you're just like, how? How? How, how did that happen? It doesn't even make sense. This movie was written for the actors and not written for the story. It's almost self-satisfying, that last little clip is, and that's really bothersome. And unfortunately, this movie belongs on Netflix. It really does, because Netflix has done a very good job of letting the audience know what to expect from their content that just goes straight to streaming. They're gonna spend millions of dollars for all these bells and whistles for great cinematography, great CGI, and then just on the fucking story. That's what Netflix does. Well, Netflix, at least you're consistent. Overall, this movie, as I said, what pisses me off the most is that it had potential. Could have been the men in black of a vampire story. And that concept is amazing itself. Even though Netflix threw all their money into the stuff I did like about this movie, they just, they shit the bed. They shit the bed on the story. They shit the bed on the character development. They shit the bed on anything that would perceive itself as good storytelling but and there is a but here if you sit back and watch this movie just for the awesome things like the kill scenes and the fight scenes and the cinematography and the, and try to ignore all the filler it's, it's okay 
As a matter of fact, those redeeming qualities is why I'm giving this movie a D plus. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, yeah, It could have been a lot better. That's just my opinion. These films are subjective. Go watch this movie yourself and see what you think about it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this movie because I do see a lot of potential here. And honestly, if they rectify some of these things and did a better sequel, I would be interested in seeing that because the concept is so unique. M maybe maybe unique's not the right word. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just a good concept. Let me know your thoughts of this movie in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out some more of my videos. And as always, stay trigger happy, my friends. Peace. What are you doing in my room?